as pretty as these are, and they are beautiful in the front of my yard, it is time. They must be picked and cut down. Well, I guess it's time to harvest these guys. I haven't been out here since before my hip replacement surgery, but we had some cold weather and some windy weather, and this is at our lot right outside the city limits. So, I'm going to be chopping down all of this roselle and processing it today. So, that is an unexpected extra duty for today, but we'll get it done. But since I also need to harvest the one from the house, then that's okay. We'll get it. We'll get it all done today. I oh, I'm so sad. I mean, look, they're still flowering. It's crazy. It's November. All right, cut them down. I have to process them. We're going to cut it flat to the ground so we don't trip over the stalks. And I don't think they're going to come back next year. Oh, they're tied with um, rope. I don't think so. Yeah, it's not. It's good. They're tied with each other. Ah. Well, they were leaning over, so we have these. See these ties where they're held together there? I don't think I really want it on the porch. What do you want? On the floor? Well, it's going to stain the porch. Okay. Oops. I'm over. Save the life of the little jujube. It'll get sun now. have to apologize to Mr. Reels later about sticking all those limbs through every rail of the fence. <laughs> they needed support, so sorry.
All right, only one more. Look, something to to watch in between cuttings. Two more. What do you say? I said yes, two more. I forgot the one in the corner there. All these jujubes are going to be so clean. Yes. Oh. All of our jujubes will be pleased. They get some sun now. Butterfly watching while I wait. All right, last one. Hmm? I said last one. Yeah. And we can do this again next year. Maybe. I will plant them again next year. I just don't know if I'll plant them right here. And there's one on the ground. These two piles are from here at home. The other pile on the porch is the ones from our other lot. All right, it's the next day. It's getting ready to rain, and if we don't do something, there's gonna be red all over this porch. That's why we put the plastic there, because these things stain. But I wanted to show you why people use them as, see this? make gorgeous, gorgeous uh, decorations and vases, accent decorations. Really beautiful. But I'm going to clip them all off. Okay, I had to make one since I have all these Mexican sunflowers and I have all these roselle. I had to make one flower arrangement. just to show you what a wonderful accent it makes for flower arrangements. All right, here's my big old pile. Mr. Rev, oh, <laughs> he almost got my Seminole pumpkin. I only got two of them this year. I didn't plant that many seeds, it was just a tester thing. But he set me up with a chair and I'm gonna start cleaning these things. Even when the doctor says it's okay for me to bend over, I will forever use this gripper, picker upper. Um, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's kind of changing the world as I see it for less back pain. all these beauties clipped off of here. All right, guys, I'll see you when they're done. Show you what all we're going to do with it. Okay, we got a half a sink full of Roselle hibiscus to process. Now, helpful hints. Like I said, the first one, put plastic down if you have it. If you're going to put it on something you don't want stained. 
Another helpful hint is wear gloves. And not just for the staining. Staining washes out. But because I always forget to wear gloves, so I'd like to remind you to wear gloves because these guys have little, I don't know if you can see them, these are not stiff little spikes, but what they have are, oh, I think you can see it right there on the edge. There, you see it? Little hairs. And those little hairs sometimes will stick right into your finger. Um, and it's not comfortable. And the other thing is, save your seeds. See how much everything gets stained? Save your seeds. Find the largest ones, the ones at the bottom of the, the strand, and save the seeds from those because they're delicious. And I'm going to, I have mine cut down. I'm cutting mine back down to the, um, the ground to see if they'll come back up. But uh, everything I read says you have to replant them every year. So save your seeds. And the third is bugs love these things. So sometimes when you're peeling them and processing them, <laughs> there will be a bug inside there. I even, uh, the last time I was processing my lats last batch, because, you know, nature in the yard, there was a roach tucked down into two of them. Um, those just got discarded because I'm scared of roaches. I know it's stupid, but I can't help it. Um, I removed ladybugs. They Apparently, they love it. But we're going to soak it. Oop, not in hot water. We are going to soak these guys and wash them. And then I'm going to get all the ants and everything that love them out of it. And then I'm going to process them. Okay, so this quick soaking is to encourage all the creatures that are inside, hiding inside them to come out of them. And then, see there's one there. Um, I will call Mr. Riv in to come and um, take care of this portion of it. And um, and then I can peel them. But first I have to soak them just a little bit, even if it does lose some of the substance. It doesn't lose much. You know, the water will start turning red immediately. But, yes. These guys got to go. Okay, this is the first wash, just to get <laughs> big things out. And uh, all I'm going to do is take these guys and just peel each leaf off individually. And then if there's a base left, like these, like these here, I will just peel that off separately. And pretty much all I leave is just about that much at the bottom. The parts that I just can't get off. Because like I said, we drink this tea probably not every day, almost every day, five days a week I'd say. So we love it. We love it. Okay, so this one's fairly small. Medium size. This is one of the large mature ones. Um, I have some that are larger, but um, you want to make sure you save the seeds from the large mature ones. And let me pop them open. I'm one-handed, so let me pop them open and show you why. Okay, as you can see, these guys, they're so small and immature. Even if you dry them, which I have done, you get something flat and about that size. That is not going to make a plant. These guys, a little bit more mature for the middle size. A little bit more mature, but they're still just not a mature seed. 
But then when you get to the big fat ones, that's when you're going to get your more mature seeds that you can, once they dry in those pods, you can plant them and be a lot more assured of getting some Jamaican sorrel or Roselle hibiscus. Uh, I've learned to wash one layer at a time. For its little second wash. Push it around, get it nice and clean. Then I will dump it over into this to drain for a little bit. And then lay it out somewhere to dry a bit, just to get the bulk of the water off until I can put it in the dehydrator. And I dehydrate them at 120. I tried 105 like you would do for green herbs, but it took three days for it to work. So, <laughs> so I dehydrate them at 120. And even that usually takes a little more than 12 hours in my Ninja dehydrator. I don't have a big dehydrator. So... I may give it like another 6 to 12 hours, depending on how big they are, how thick they are. And But another thing that I learned to speed it up for some friends of mine, because when you make tea, you know, diffusion, it's going to go, the red and the vitamin C is going to go from all the edges first. And then the middle is still going to be red. So if you chop it up before you put it in there, um, then you get a whole lot more essence in your tea. So for friends of mine, so that they don't have to worry about that, I already chopped theirs up before I dehydrated it. But for us, we just put them in a container like this. And layer a couple of these desiccant packs in there. Okay, these guys I've got chopped up and in three layers. Can't see them all, but there are three layers of this in the Ninja. And we'll see what it looks like when it's dry and how long it actually takes when it's chopped up. But usually we lose close to 50%. Time for a quick break and a cup of tea. All right, this table is 26 by 26. So I guess these are like, it's nice and piled on there. But I got a table's worth, probably about 23 by 23, stacked pretty thick. So that's one batch. Now, I have to go get the ones in the front yard. Okay, it has been 17 and a half hours. And they are nice and crisp. They're all shrunk up, crisp, and 17 and a half hours at 120 did it. All right. I'm Got some more ready to roll. For now, I'm gonna go and we'll finish this all up. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, um, I hope you hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell. And uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. So again, plant what makes you happy. Cause if you like teas, flowers, plants, root vegetables, anything you like. If it makes you happy, give it a shot. You might be able to grow it. Bye y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video.